Welcome again, everybody. Uh, this is a new case that has uh, a fancy diagnosis at the end. But uh, as we go along, we'll go over a few basic anatomical concepts, which would make it easy for uh, students, interns, and junior radiology residents. Uh, so both uh, seniors and juniors, uh, bear with us. Uh, this would be useful at the end. Here's the pre-contrast uh, T1 image. And this is the same type of uh, imaging after giving intravenous contrast. To better understand the anatomy in this area, in the next uh, section, I'll post a link to one of the earlier radiology bits uh, tips and tricks. I'll ask you to pause uh, for a while, look at that link. Uh, understand the anatomy that we'll talk about, and then we'll continue after that again. Now that you saw the clip, let's go to a few normal anatomical points. This is a normal case. This is different than the case that we started with. We'll talk about a few concepts here. So quickly for juniors, this is an MRI in a sagittal view. The MRI is T1 weighted. That means that fluid is dark. A bit of orientation. This is anterior where the nose is. This is in the back posteriorly. This is the top of the head superiorly, and this is below inferiorly. As we agreed before, fluid is black on this type of imaging, the T1 MRI image. Uh, CSF looks uh, black, but keep in mind that what's even darker than fluid or CSF is air, such as the air you see here in the sphenoid sinus or air you see here in the nasopharynx. Another piece of information, fat is very bright on such a T1 acquisition. And here's a good example. This is a piece of bone. This pointy piece of bone here is called the clivus and it contains internal fatty marrow. That's why it's so bright on T1. You'll know from the clip that this is the third ventricle. You'll also know that this is the floor of the third ventricle, separating it from the rest of the CSF spaces here. The uh, floor as described in the clip uh, is composed of several things. One of the important things I want to highlight is this region here. So this thin line here is a region that's contained between the mammary body and the stalk of the pituitary gland. And it's called the tuber cinerium, which is a fancy name for a part of the hypothalamus. So tuber cinerium, fancy part of a hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is connected through the pituitary stalk to the pituitary gland. Now, first of all, the pituitary gland, this structure here, resides within the socket, which is part of the sphenoid bone. As we mentioned, this black area here is the air or pneumatization in the sphenoid paranasal sinus, which is part of the paranasal sinus system. And the pituitary gland lies in this socket. This socket is called the Silla Tersica. By the way, the Silla Tersica means a Turkish seat because it looks like that. Another name for this area is the pituitary fossa. That's why this part of the CSF space is called the suprasillar cistern. So it's above the cilla tersica and the pituitary gland, suprasillar cistern. So as you noted, the hypothalamus is connected through the pituitary stalk to the pituitary gland. A little bit more about the pituitary gland. First of all, the gland is mainly composed of two big parts, the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland. As you see on T1, the anterior pituitary gland is a larger component that has an intermediate signal intensity, which means it has an intermediate color that's very similar to the soft tissues elsewhere, while the posterior pituitary has a different color. 
you notice that the posterior pituitary is smaller and has a bright appearance similar to that of fat. The posterior pituitary is that bright on T1 because it contains the vasopressin hormone or antidiuretic hormone. That's a hormone that's uh, spontaneously white on T1. You could see the posterior pituitary brightness on T1 on most uh, adult uh, patients, so this should be part of the radiology residence routine when checking for a normal pituitary gland. As we mentioned, this is the uh, stock and pituitary gland appearance uh, without giving intravenous contrast. So let's see what happens after contrast administration. This is the same sagittal T1 image after giving contrast. And here's how the stock and pituitary look. The stock and pituitary gland are very vascular and that's why they show this extreme bright appearance with intravenous contrast. This also helps you to detect any internal pituitary gland abnormalities, as well as better delineation of the size and appearance of the stock itself. Now, what's the normal size of a pituitary gland? It really depends on the patient's age and hormonal status. Uh, for example, patients who are uh, younger adults would have a bulkier gland compared to an older patient. In addition, patients who are pregnant or at puberty, where there's lots of hormonal activity going on, the pituitary gland would be more bulkier in appearance. Now that we revised the important anatomical uh, considerations on uh, sagittal T1 pre and post contrast, let's go to the abnormal case again. The abnormal case is a 22 year old female patient. The first thing you notice is that the pituitary gland is very small and flat. So you have a very flat pituitary gland. At this age, you'd expect the pituitary gland to be larger. So this is a hypoplastic pituitary gland. The second thing that you should look for, as we emphasized before on a T1 sagittal image, is the bright spot representing the posterior pituitary. You cannot see it here. If you don't, you have to look for it elsewhere. So if you don't see the posterior pituitary gland, try to look for it in other locations. It could be ectopic. And one of the possible locations is here, where it could be sticking to the floor of the third ventricle, in particular, very close to the tuberosinarium. And there is a bright spot that you might question in this location. So this could be an ectopic posterior pituitary gland. The third component that you should see clearly in an adult patient is the stock. It's very difficult to appreciate, but the pituitary stalk might be here, this very thin line, and that's not normal. It should be a bulky stalk as we saw on the prior normal case. Now let's complete the case by looking at the uh, T1 sagittal after administration of intravenous contrast. This is a homogeneously enhancing hypoplastic and small pituitary gland. This is a very thin enhancing stalk it's almost not there, but you could see it here. And this here is confirmation of the ectopic location of the posterior pituitary gland. Given the findings, let me give you more information about this patient. So this is a 22 year old female patient who presents to us as a case of failure to grow. Her bone age is 17 years old while she's actually 22 years old, as we mentioned. And since the uh, hypothalamic pituitary pathway is responsible for uh, secreting multiple hormones, including that for growth, this explains why the patient is presenting the way she is. The combination of a hypoplastic pituitary gland, of an absent or interrupted stalk, and an ectopic pituitary gland is consistent with a form of congenital hypopituitarism, decreasing function of the pituitary gland, also known as pituitary stock interruption syndrome. So let's revise what we talked about today. We talked about a few basics, including CSF being dark on T1 while air being even darker. We talked about fat, such as that in the bones of the sphenoid and clivus appearing bright because of fat. And we talked about the uh, anatomy in the uh, pituitary and suprapituitary regions. The pituitary gland has a different size and shape depending on the age and hormonal status. It has an anterior pituitary gland, which is dark, while a bright posterior pituitary gland containing ADH 
is uh, also seen. You also have the uh, supracellular cistern containing CSF and the components of the floor of the third ventricle from the mammary body to bursinarium, which is part of the hypothalamus, pituitary stack, and optic chiasm. The uh, hypothalamic tubercinarium is contained between the mammillary body and the stalk and actually connects to the pituitary gland via the stalk. We also learned about a neat case of uh, congenital hypopituitarism where the uh, posterior pituitary gland is ectopic, the stalk is absent or interrupted, and the pituitary gland itself is hypoplastic, known as pituitary stalk interruption syndrome. And that's it for today's case. If you thought this was useful in any way, form, or shape, please spread the word by uh, telling others about the account, whether it's on Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, or YouTube. Um, if you have any comments or questions, uh, please uh, shoot and uh, see you with more cases later.